Hey everybody, welcome back to First Responder Moms Sanitation in a Disaster series. This is part four now. We're working on um, setting up a sanitary bathroom environment inside of our home during the event of a long-term water or wastewater failure or lack of water. So thanks for coming back. You're welcome to uh, view those parts one, two, and three. I hope you have already done that. If not, I really encourage you to go back and check them out. Uh, in part three that we just finished, we actually got finished plugging all the holes, right? We have to protect our home from the main sewer lines that are gonna emit toxic fumes and animals and all kinds of things if you experience an event where the ground move or where your pea traps are just drying up. There's some fumes and things to protect yourself from. So we've done that. All the drains are plugged. We're no longer using our kitchen sink. We're not draining water down those drains. Everything's dry. Our potties are now dry. All of our bathrooms are dry, um, dry potties. You're not gonna use that. Now, a lot of people say, well, how many bathrooms am I gonna set up? Well, I, I particularly would only set up one because I gotta manage that waste and I gotta keep it really clean as we learned in other parts of the series. Your family's health is in your hands now so everything's gonna be really clean. Um, so I don't wanna set up, if I have four bathrooms in my house, I don't wanna set up four temporary bathrooms. However, I'm going to make as many potty kits as I think I may need because what if your house is the only one that's structurally sound right now and other people are staying with you? Or what if you have a person in your family that did get sick and you're trying to quarantine them? They may need their own bathroom set up. So I would recommend having several potty kits available to you. Maybe one in your shelter in place kit, um, one in your home, one in your RV trailer, something like that, and the ability to set up more if you need to. Um, however, I'm, the concept is I'm gonna try to keep it as minimal as I can for how many bathrooms I have, but I am gonna make a dry potty out of all those other bathrooms because even if we're not using them, they have to be plugged. So now let's set up a sanitary bathroom environment. What we're going to do is make sure that there's a couple of rules. First of all, we always keep it inside, just like we learned in part two. We do not make pit latrines out in our yard. It won't work. We don't dig holes and put shelters around them. You're gonna bring disease, illness, and vermin and insects into your home. So it has to be kept inside. That's the number one rule. It's inside. And use your bathroom. Like it's familiar. Your toilet's there. Everybody's familiar with everything that's happening in there. So we're gonna use your bathroom. The second rule is actually really common sense. If you haven't thought of it yet, some of you guys that maybe served in the military or experienced time overseas, uh, it's really simple. You actually just need to separate. You see, putrefied human waste, when you have solid waste and urine mixed together, it's one of the most toxic uh, substances on earth. You do not have the ability to cope with it, to deal with it, to process it like you should. Um, the, when you separate urine from the solid waste, it becomes much more manageable. It's really not easy, but much more manageable to deal with. So that's what we're gonna do in our bathroom. We're going to separate. So what you need is a five gallon bucket and a seat. In my house, I have teenage daughters. We're living in luxury. We have the seat. So here's what I have. Um, I have a potty bucket. Now, the great thing about this kind of potty bucket is that it will need no bags at all because this is only gonna be used for urine. I'm gonna teach my kids, teach my family, this is for urine only. The seat, like I mentioned, is a camping potty seat, right? Everybody can see that? Um, these are really easy to get. They're like 10 bucks. They pop on and off, right? Voila. So here we go. A potty seat. It fits right on top of a five or even a six gallon bucket if you need a taller bucket. And this is what we would use for urine only. You can get creative with this. There are plenty of urinals out there on the market today and different ways to make them. You need to separate solid waste from urine. So this is gonna be my urine bucket and I'm gonna teach my kids and I'm gonna label it any way I want. Number one, this is for pee pee. Whatever you wanna do. Teach your kids, do the best you can. Now, there's no bags needed for this. Urine is not dangerous. <laughs> Unless your family, a member of your family has a kidney infection, urine is actually fairly safe to deal with and dispose of. So anytime somebody uses this or as often as you decide you're gonna empty it, you're gonna take it outside and somewhere in a gravelly area, somewhere near shrubbery, something like that, you're gonna dump it. I wouldn't dump it in the same spot every time simply because the over mineralization or the high pH balance will kill your lawn, yellow. Maybe at this time of crisis, you're not really worried about that, but you can take this out and empty it anytime you want. I would not empty it on a current garden. If you have a garden that's being successful, you're gonna need it right now. 
and do not empty urine into your garden. And people will say, whoa, they, you can fertilize a garden with urine. Well, that's true. But those individuals that are doing that have done their research, they're pro-gardeners, they know what they're doing, they're diluting it, they're using it for a different type of fertilization. And if you don't have that experience and knowledge in advance of the event, don't start killing your garden by dumping urine on, or urine on your garden right now. So you can dump it where you need to. Uh, soil is great, denature of waste and the gravel will siphon it through too. So, you're gonna dump this anywhere you want. Then, you're gonna scrub it really, really good. Everything that comes back in is really clean. And we will talk about cleansers, so join me for a video on your cleansers. But anyways, you clean it, you bring it back in. It is that simple, that's for urine. Now, what you're gonna do is you need to set up your regular ceramic bowl for solid waste. So you're gonna teach your family that that's where you go solid waste. But we've created a dry potty with that, right? It's clean, it's dry, it's empty, it has a tube sock down in it with the racquetball. So you have to set the potty up now for solid waste. And what you're gonna do, what you're gonna need is bags. So you need bags. You need a lot of bags. In a future video, we are gonna talk debris management and trash. I do not know what your trash looks like the week that Christmas doesn't pick up, right? In my house, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it looks a little ridiculous. Um, in an event like this, especially like what we're anticipating an earthquake, you're not going to have a garbage man come regularly. They're going to be struggling to manage that waste at a city, county, state level. You need bags. How many bags are in your storage preparedness supplies? So get your bags. Uh, now what we talked about in part three uh, was the fact that the little tiny bags are really expensive, they're not, uh, they're not usable in your regular toilet, they will not fit. So you need a large bag, such as a kitchen bag. Now, these kitchen bags are great, they are thick enough, they'll work just fine. We're going to bag the bowl of your toilet. Uh, some people have larger, elongated bowls and things like that, so they need the black outdoor uh, kitchen bag. So you need to figure out what size are my potties and how, how big of a bag do I need. But these ones work just fine for my standard. Make sure that you find that out before you go buy a bunch of these and then realize that you have to tear and stretch them to get them to fit around your bowl. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift the lid on your seat and you just line the bowl, right? You put a bag in it, line the bowl up over the edge, up over the lid, put the seat back down. And you are going to bag the bowl. And that is for solid waste, so you can empty it. Now I know I told you in uh, part two, you cannot have a bag of waste, right? Trash man's not picking up, you're gonna do a huge disservice. But the difference is, now what you're gonna have about uh, is a bag of solid waste, not putrefied waste, not a wet bag filled with urine and, and putrefied waste. So this will be a bag for only solid waste, that's what your toilet's for. Now, you need a third item in your bathroom. So if I can reach over here and grab it. It's a two gallon bucket, right? Pretty simple. It's a two gallon bucket. These are like a buck fifty at your home improvement stores. Now again, we're living in luxury at my house. We have the Gamma Seal lids. I really like these lids. They're pretty cool because they're easy to get into on this type of bucket, right? You can just spin it and take it off. These are available Amazon, all kinds of food storage places or food organization places. Um, but get it for the two gallon bucket. You want a little bucket and an easy access lid. And here's what I'm going to do. Here's another secret ingredient you need for your potty kits. Um, I'm going to fill it with kitty litter. Kitty litter is amazing. It does a lot of wonderful things. It's good for all kinds of uses. Um, but I'm going to fill this with kitty litter and another supply that I'll need is a scoop. So inside this little bucket is kitty litter and a scoop. And anytime someone uses the solid waste bowl, uh, they're going to open this lid, take out a little scoop of kitty litter and completely cover the solid waste. And then they're going to close the lid and go on their way. You may be able to empty that bag every single time, but I'm doubting you have that many bags. We don't know how long the event is going to last, right? They were saying weeks to months. So I'm going to be really careful. But in the meantime, that kitty litter is going to completely dry it out and it's going to protect your home from odors, right? It is amazing. Uh, it's an amazing product. You need kitty litter in your storage supplies. I also don't like to just set the box of kitty litter next to my toilet because, you know, if you have young children or elderly parents or somebody, I don't want them lifting it and dumping more than they need to or things like that. So this little bucket is great. The other good thing about this bucket is when you're making a potty kit, all your supplies fit in here, my scoop fits in there, and then this two gallon bucket 
will drop right down into that and then they can hit, right? Easy. All my supplies are in there and I keep them wherever I want. So that's your setup inside. It is a big ceramic bowl that, that has a bag, the urine bucket or the urinal, whatever you're using to separate. It has the two gallon bucket with it filled with kitty litter and a scoop. And then you need to somehow in there have the ability to wash your hands, whether that's hand sanitizer or whatever your method is that you can keep your hands clean in this event. Um, that's your inside setup. And again, we're gonna talk about cleansers and, and soaps, hand sanitizers and things like that in another video. But for now, that's the inside setup of your bathroom. Now, now I know you have a bag of waste, right? You're like, okay, now what do I do? So that's why you need to come back for part five in our Sanitation into Disaster series. And I'm gonna teach you how we'll dispose of the waste. Uh, thanks for sticking with us through part four. I hope you're learning some stuff and it's worth your time. I appreciate you coming back. If you'd like a written handout of the instructions that I've been given, you can go to firstrespondermom.com and there'll be a free PDF download there for you. So thanks for staying with us and we'll see you in part five. Thanks.